guys, so ever since I did the tutorial regarding how I use questionnaires in Pixify, a lot of people have been asking me to do other Pixify videos. And the honest truth is I've been using Pixify for about two years now, and I just recently started diving into the other areas of how Pixify can help my business. I actually was using Pixify for a really long time just to send out contracts electronically and to collect my payments uh, via PayPal using the contract feature and the questionnaire feature. Uh, so I thought that I would start off really simple and um, show you guys how to set up a contract and send a contract via Pixify because that's how I was using it for such a long time. So when you first get into the Pixify panel, what you want usually want to do is set up your branding because everything in Pixify is going to revolve around your branding. Um, so how you want to get to it is you just want to go to settings go to brands okay and if you've never been here before you want to just create a new brand when you get into your branding area the most important things you want to set up is obviously your brand name um, your URL you want to make sure you upload your, lo your logo on it because you know that's going to show up on your contracts it's going to show up on your um, it's going to show up on basically any kind of link that you send your client like the client portal and stuff so that way they know that it's you when they're coming to a link that you're sending them via Pixify Okay, um, important, other important things is your website, your email, and just information on where to contact you because, because that also shows up in your contract as well. So then after this, what you want to probably do is set up your event types. Event types are really important because, you know, that way you can categorize your clients, categorize your events um, based on what you shoot. Okay, so you want to do that by going to things to do, go to events, go to event types. Just click on add event type and that way you can um, put that here. I only shoot mostly weddings and boudoir. I do some portraits but not tons. Uh, so that's why you're not going to see a whole bunch of things like babies and stuff like that. Um, it's good to use these wizard tools too because they kind of add events for you based off of what other photographers are already shooting. Okay, so once you add your event type then what I would do is go to these the templates area go to communications. Okay. And this is where you can kind of set up common responses that you always send to the clients all the time. So if you are get, having to answer the same questions all the time or you're sending out the same email after you get an inquiry, this is a great place to organize that. What I really love about this is these wizard tools they have right here. Okay, It has stuff that you know other photographers are already doing so you don't have to do so much legwork if you, know, you don't already have a common response you already sent. Okay. I really want to show you the common responses regarding contracts because it's what we're talking about today. So say for instance I shot I shoot weddings and I have a client that's ready to book and I want to go ahead and send out their contract to them. What I'll need to do is set up a common response to get them to their wedding contract portal. Okay, So you click on this right here, wedding send contract, press finish with selections. It's going to automatically add that to your common responses. You have, can click on it to go ahead and customize it the way you want, okay? So you customize the subject, you know, the whole internal email itself. Um, you can add variable responses. So for instance, if you just don't want the first name, you want the first and last name or something like that. You can just go and add that here, okay? Um, what's great about this, the wizard tool is that automatically added the little links of, for your contract portal already into the email so that way you don't have to go and do that yourself so really what you want to do is just go ahead and kind of customize this based off of your branding or personality on how you would respond to a client once they're ready to book okay so then I'm not gonna press save because I'm not really gonna save this but you would want to save it okay so once I have that all set up then what I want to do is now I want to go ahead and set up my contract template so I would go to templates right here go to contracts so in this area right here is where you would actually put your contract. Um, and I'm sure that you send the same contract to every wedding client and every boudoir client or however. Um, so this would be really helpful for you so that way you can just bring it into the client event whenever you're ready. Okay, so to, to set up a new contract, you just press add new contract template. And then what it should do is just open up a little like, word file and you can just copy and paste your contract all into that word file. So let me just show you one that I have. Okay, um, so here is my wedding contract template. What, what I did was I just took my whole Word document and I pasted it into this form right here. And then 
when I used to manually have to type in all this information, now I can set up response variables to go ahead and put that information in there. So you can put, you know, the event date, response variable, the event date, you know, things like that, the bride and groom's name, things, and I'll show you where you would enter this information in, so that way it populates correctly into the contract when you are ready, okay? Um, usually I leave these blanks because I kind of fill those in manually, and this contract right now is kind of a kind of old contract. I was actually entering in their information right here manually uh, based on the package they were choosing. Um, and I'm just gonna leave it the way it is, but we can talk a little bit more about how we can populate those via packages in a later video. Okay. A few important things that you probably want to know about is this initial field right here. This is great because you can actually, you know, insert it into certain areas, have them initial it so that way they you know that they kind of read over it or it kind of covers your ass if, you know, they initial it and they didn't read over it. So you, I usually add it basically in a few important places that I really want them to read and check out. Another thing you might want to know is about checkboxes. What I really like about this is that um, you can say, for instance, say that their package is $4,000. You want to give them a choice of how they want to pay, like if they want to do an installment plan or something like that. You can add checkboxes to give them certain options on how they want to pay their remaining balance or whatever you know for my boudoir contracts I have these check boxes on so that way they can choose to share their photos or not share their photos and it's been really helpful for me so that way I don't have to ask up front and it's in their contracts so if they signed it they say they want to share the photos so okay then you press press update contract and that will automatically add it to your contract templates okay Okay, so then the next thing you want to do is say you get an inquiry regarding your website or your email. You can also use the lead form regarding Pixify, but just for this example, I'm just going to say that you got an inquiry regarding your website and you're entering it manually. So what you want to do is just want to go to leads. Okay. I already have a lead already set up, but if you want to create a lead, just press new lead and then it will bring you to this area right here. Usually what I want to do is enter the event date if you know the event date and I for your my forms usually people like to do their name and their email sometimes they don't give me a phone number that's totally fine name and email is all I need okay and then I usually like to enter like their little comments or notes sections right here okay and then you press update all right so say this client you know I've been corresponding with them for a while and they are ready to go ahead and book okay so once they're ready to go ahead and convert book, I want to go ahead and click on this button where it says convert lead into client. That will bring them automatically to my client list and not no longer my lead list. A few things that in this area that's helpful is the archive lead area, which is if, you know, basically if you lost contact with them or, you know, they booked somebody else, it's a good way to kind of categorize the people that you didn't book. So that way you can kind of see, you know, in the future, you know, why you're losing clientele. Um, it may change your strategy to try to get them into a client. Okay. Okay. So once you convert the lead over to a client, um, then you can access them by clicking on clients right here. I already set up a sample client for us right now. So usually by this time, I will already have the bride and groom's information, their name, their phone number, their email address. Okay, and usually I will ask for their mailing address because I need that for the contract. And in this area, you can also set up their client portal, even though now they have a new setup where they can set up their own username and password. But it's pretty simple to set it up there for them right here. And, you know, just their anniversary and just important things you need to know. And then also a note section so you can add in more notes. Um, for instance, if you had a consultation with them or something. So once you have all that information, what you'll want to do is press add new event so that way you'll be able to send them their contract. And then this actually will add the event to your calendar as well. So it'll block the time slot off. So I'm just going to name it bride and groom wedding. And remember when we entered in the event type at the beginning of the video, that's where I'll enter it here. Okay, let's just say they're getting married today. Press add event. So this will take you automatically to the event page and this is where you'll be able to send their contract. So you want to do is press contract, press create new contract, and this is where we'll be able to go ahead and insert the contract template that we talked about earlier. So you just want to click on the template that you want to use, okay? And it automatically should populate all this information that 
you had on your variable section. Okay, and if you have nothing to customize here, then you can just press Save Contract. Uh, but if you do have stuff to customize, then you can definitely change it here. And I usually just name the contract. Okay, and press Save Contract. And now it's going to bring you to this area. So you just want to make sure you have a recipient. And for repayments, I usually use PayPal, but you're welcome to use anybody you want. And what I really like about this is that you can add a payment here. And what will happen is once they sign the contract, they'll send them straight to PayPal to make their payment for the retainer, which is nice because I don't have to send a separate invoice for the payment itself, which saves me a lot of time. I'm not going to add the payment now because I don't really want to collect payment for myself. Um, but just so you know that you can actually add that here. So when I'm ready, I'm going to go ahead and press send contract. Okay, now it's going to go ahead and um, let me choose to populate that email that I just created at the beginning of the video, right? And you can customize the email if you need to, you know, based on the client. If not, then you can just go ahead and just send it through. I usually don't need to customize it because it's just a regular email for them to sign their contract. You press yes here, press send contract. So what I really like about this area of Pixify is this activity log right here because it tells you when you sent the contract. It also tells you if the client views the contract. That way, you know, if they come back to you and say they didn't get it, you can pop in here and just say, hey, well, I did show that you viewed it on this time. Um, and then it also kind of reassures you as well, you know, if they got it or not. So now I'm going to show you what the client sees when they get the contract. So this is the email they got right here. Okay, and it comes with the link. So you click on their link. So this is takes them straight to the client contract portal. Um, and as you can see, it has my logo on there because I entered that in my brandy. And I'm just gonna enter in my email address. And then we're just gonna copy and paste the password into here. Okay, so now they can see their contract and initial it and sign it here at the bottom. So once they click on sign contract, then it will take them straight to PayPal to take their retainer payment. And then you'll get an email in your inbox. So you can go into Pixify to kind of look at the contract signing and make sure they make their payment. Okay. So subscribe to this channel if you want to keep up with more tips and tricks. And I will be doing some future tutorials as well. Okay. Hopefully this helps you. Talk to you next time. Bye.